is called Evaluate to Motivate from the Successful Club Series. So let's welcome Selena. Yay, Selena. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Welcome, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. Uh, my speech today, again, is from the Successful Club Series, Evaluate to Motivate. This is the second speech that I will be delivering and the final speech of the su Successful Club Series. Um, along with completing my Competent Communicator and my Competent Leadership next week, I will be earning the Triple Crown, so I'm very excited. Thank you very much. So evaluate to motivate. The reason why I chose this topic is my first speech that I did a part of this series was controlling your fear. Fear of public speaking. Well, I had another fear. Fear of being evaluated. One of my fears standing up here and telling me everything that I did wrong. Are you kidding me? My speech was perfect. I did nothing wrong. <laughs> so you're going to stand up here and you're going to tell me how perfect I am. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. We all have areas of opportunity. And that's something that I struggled with. I don't want someone to criticize me and give me feedback. Because I felt like it would be a little me that I would walk out of here feeling less of a person if I wasn't perfect. That's not the case, though. Again, this is a safe environment. But it still scared me. So that's why I made the step. Join Toastmasters. Learn to control my fear. Learn to take effective criticism from my peers. So I'm going to share with you a quote. A life spent making mistakes is not only more honorable, but more useful than a life spent doing nothing. Of course. I didn't want to do nothing. I wanted to be a leader. I wanted to be recognized. I wanted my my employers to recognize me. I wanted to get promotions. I wanted to get raises. So I read this every day, and again, it's by George Bernard Shaw, and I have it on my screensaver at work, and I read it every day. So when I do make a mistake, I know that I'm doing something, and I'm learning. So today, our agenda, evaluations benefit speakers by evaluating by the tell and sell approach, how to evaluate effectively, avoid being disingenuous, and then our closing. Evaluations benefit speakers by you want to pro providing immediate feedback. What, what stood fresh on your mind? What happened? What did you see? What did you like? What could have done better? What can take that speech to the next level? Offering methods of improvement. Again, we all have areas of opportunity. None of us are perfect. We strive for, for, excuse me, strive for perfection, but we're never going to reach that. Nobody is perfect. It doesn't matter if you're a tenured Toastmaster, it doesn't matter if you're a DTM or you're a new member. Nobody's perfect. We all have areas of opportunity. That's what's going to make us better. Building and maintaining self-esteem. What did you do well? What am I doing well? I enjoyed this because of this. Connect to the speech. Because if somebody walks out this door feeling like they did horrible, feel belittled, feeling like this big, they're never coming back. Evaluating by the tell and the sell approach. Anybody know what the tell and the sell approach is? When the evaluator speaks, the speaker listens. The little thing here says, speaking and listening, we have two ears and one mouth. So that when we can, that way we can listen twice as much as we speak. 
So there's none of this back and forth speaker saying, well, I did this. They come natural to us. But I want to make sure that when I'm giving a speech, I'm giving it properly. That everything that I'm learning in part of Toastmasters, I'm doing. So I like for her to look out for my transitions. The ands, the so's, you knows, the ums. Are you counting those, Irina? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the things that you watch out for. They've also, Toastmasters is great. They give us everything that we need to look for. Everything that we need to make us better. I also discussed, I've already gone over my dis concerns. And then as evaluators, during the speech, make sure that you're engaged, that you're watching, that you're listening, that you're making eye contact. Don't be looking around the room or checking your phones. Because if you were giving a speech and someone was checking your phone or looking around the room or staring at the building across the street, they're not engaged. They're not listening. They're not paying attention. Put yourself in their position. Also, to take notes. Make sure that everything is fresh. Okay. What did you see? What did you like? Again, what are your areas of opportunity? What can we do to take our speeches to the next level? Again, this past competition, we had Nate giving a speech, and we had Chris in our evaluations. Let's give effective feedback so our Toastmasters, so Phoenix Rising, can go to Washington next year. So we can compete if it's in Washington next year. <laughs> Canada. So how to evaluate again effectively, also to choose your words carefully. That sucked. That was awful. Wow, I really hated that speech. That's not going to help anybody. It's not going to help me. Give words like, I really like that. That was awesome. You delivered this perfectly. This is how I felt when you said that. You want to evaluate the speech, not the person. And promote self-esteem. Words are powerful. You can lift someone else up or put someone down. You can help someone or hurt someone. You can love someone or hate someone. You can make a difference in someone's life. Again, choose your words carefully. Because again, words have a lasting effect. Avoid being disingenuous. Honest evaluations are upbeat, they're encouraging, while offering suggestions and improvement. So again, for Jen, my speech was not perfect. I've noticed mistakes that I've made throughout. But I want Jen to point those out. I want to hear, how can I be better next time? How can I take this speech that I had just given you and just blow it out of the house? Again, effective criticism, effective feedback. So, in closing, connect to your opening statement. What did you like? How did it affect you? Summarize your key points. You liked A, B, and C. You can do D and E this much better. Give a personal story or an example. How did you connect with that speech? I know Nate gave his speech at the competition, and when he was speaking about his cousin, I felt it. I felt that loss. I began to get teary. That's how you connect. This way you know, your speaker knows as you and an evaluator, you're connecting with them. And encourage listeners to apply what they learned and what they heard. Mr. Chessmaster. Hey!